your main objective is to give you fans the best tag team division in the world. I like to think that everything that we said has come true. I mean, 11 weeks worth of television and almost every main event has been a tag team match. And we stood on that stage and do you remember saying that we were gonna show the world that we are the best tag team in the entire wrestling business? And I gotta, that part, that part stings. That part, that part hurts me because it feels like we've been lying to you guys. First several weeks were rough for us. We haven't been the best tag team in AEW. In fact, there's been a lot, a, a lot of teams that have been done better than yeah, us. The rankings show it. But for the last several weeks, we've been we've been scratching, we've been clawing, we've been climbing our way back up to the top of the tag team rankings until finally on Dynamite, Texas Street by the Young Bucks for Santana and Ortiz. Meltzer Trevor on the chairs. We won. And we earned ourselves a shot for the AEW Tag Team Championship belts. Frankie Kazarian, Scorpio Sky, SoCal Uncensored. How many times do you think that SC has been told, you're great, but you're not the Young Bucks? People might not realize this, but they're some of our best friends in this world. Uh, hell, we're, we're going to have them uh, over for Christmas dinner. Now here we are. Yep. Guys, friends or not, Wednesday, it's our time to win those belts. It's our time to shine like we were supposed to the, from the get-go from this thing. Nick and I are tired of, of, of lying to the fans and saying we're the best. We're going to show you through our actions that we're the best. And guys, I, I hate if it's going to be awkward at the dinner table on Christmas when Nick and I have our new championship belts out on display for our entire families to see. Merry Christmas. The Young Bucks will get an AEW World Tag Team title shot this week. Hi everyone, this is AEW Dark and I'm Tony Schiavone. I'm Dasha Gonzalez. Yes you are, and I know you're excited that the Young Bucks are now the number one contenders for the World Tag Team title and we'll get that shot against SCU coming up right here in AEW on Dynamite. That's right, it has been quite the road for the Young Bucks. I mean, they were in a rut for a little bit, but now they're the number one contenders, and I personally hope to see them walk away with that AEW tag team gold around their waist. When you're hot, you're hot, and they are hot right now. Here's the lineup this week, right here on Dark. As they get ready to defend the tag team belts against the Young Bucks, SCU cannot look past what they have this week on Dark because they will meet in tag team action, private party. Now we have two matches this week from the women's division as Dr. Britt Baker will meet Machiko, a young competitor making her debut here in AEW. And Chris Datlander goes one on one against B Priestley. And we'll get an update on our women's division, including the latest rankings from Lexi Nair. And then in our main event in what should be a high flying Quick paced affair, the Hybrid 2 teams up with Pac to meet best friends and Orange Cassidy. Like you and I, best friends. That's right, best friends. <laughs> That's right. But right now, <laughs> let's head to the ring for our first match on Dark. Excalibur has a couple of surprises. All right, Excalibur, are you doing good over there? Let's hear it for Excalibur. Excuse me. All right, Excalibur, you, you ready to go? I said excuse me! That said too hot, Justin. I said excuse me! Ladies and gentlemen, Vicky Guerrero. Simple one ball with a 20 minute 
time limit. Introduce it first. From a location where you need an invitation, at a combined weight of 24 ounces of vodka cranberry, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, Private Party. Well, thank you very much, Tony and Dasha. I'm Excalibur, joined here by none other than the illustrious Vicky Guerrero. Vicky, thank you for joining us here on AEW Dark. I am so happy to be here. Life dream. I am so excited. Well, it is my absolute pleasure to be sitting here next to you, and it is my pleasure to be calling this non-title match alongside of you as Private Party yes. takes on SoCal Uncensored, the AEW World Tag Team Champions. They're wearing the Cougar Stripes. I'm kind of hot and flushed right now. Well, you've been to a private party once or twice in your time. Yes. And, uh, you know, if you saw two gentlemen like Mark Quinn and Isaiah Cassidy in a private party, yeah, I'd, I'd have to be restrained. Yeah, uh, you know what? You would think a little restraining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little hot flash right now. And their opponents from Southern California at a combined weight of 415 pounds, they are the AEW World Tag Team Champions, Freddy Kazarian, Scorpio Sky. See you. Hey, talk about hot flashes. Oh. <laughs> well, so Private Party, they were the story in the first round of the AEW World Tag Team Title Tournament. They upset the number one seed, Young Bucks. But these two men right here, Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky, SCU, they overcame adversity when their partner, Christopher Daniels, was taken out before their first round match. Sky filling in on late notice, and they went all the way to the finals and defeated the Lucha Brothers to become the first ever AEW World Tag Team Champions. Vicky, talk about that mental boost of striving for the gold and finally putting it around your waist. What does that do for a competitor and their mental state? Well, you know, when you put all the hard work and the dedication into your craft, I mean, there's only one reward, and that's winning it, and that's the big win, so that's what's important. And thus far, SCU has been able to defend those titles successfully this, of course, is a non-title matchup. Private Party, an unranked tag team here in the AEW rankings. They Rankings do come out on Twitter, social media, every Friday afternoon. Be on the lookout for that. AE Wrestling on Twitter, All Elite Wrestling on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Might even be on TikTok as well. And that man right there, Scorpio Sky. Well, he was right there. Yeah. But uh, Scorpio Sky was the real story of how SCU was able to overcome adversity. He filled in for the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels, after Daniels was taken out. He actually wrestled in street clothes in, in one shoe. Wow. And was able, to, uh, was able to guide his team to victory throughout. But You know, it's about being at the right place at the right time. And always being prepared. Yes. And that's been the mentality of private party is Isaiah Cassidy in there in the, uh, the red. I see him, Excalibur. I see you, him. You like, uh, you like yeah. what you see? Yeah, it's cougar stripes. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the, the red club wear, I believe that is a, a velour. There's nothing wrong with it, Excalibur. No, no. Okay. Look at the, I mean, you know, the mismatch, uh, the mismatch pockets on the on the behind. It's definite, all that's, fine. That's it's a choice. all fine. But also a choice is Frankie Kazarian exerting his power with that shoulder tackle. Cassidy goes for the trip, goes up and over the top. Went for the hip toss, but no, Kazarian reversed into a pin. One, two, only a one count. Cassidy was able to get his shoulder up. Now a side headlock takeover. So much talent in the ring. I mean, really, I mean, these four guys are just really just up and coming. And, you know, it's just, it's a it's an impression every time I, I see AEW and these four guys. I mean, Yeah, AEW, the, the mantra here is all about youth and all about giving chances to uh, to young competitors that may, you know, may have been overlooked or may have not been been able to to make a break on the big yeah. stage, but Private Party has proven time after time and again that they can flourish under the spotlights. And that's what's great about AEW is that everyone has the opportunity to shine in their own creativity. I, I think that's just amazing what, what they oh, are offering. Oh, look at this roll up. One, two, one, two. Kazarian and Cassidy trading pinfalls. Single leg trip there, but Kazarian shoving off Cassidy. Cassidy and Kazarian springing up to their feet. Nice. Meeting eye to eye in the center of the ring. Kazarian, great show of respect here. And would, would you, in, in your experience, in a non-title match, do you think the champions are prone to taking their foot off the gas? 
No, I think that it's always on the line. You always want to win. You know, you don't want to let your guard down, and, you know, that's when things happen. So I think that's when, you know, when you're a champion and you have the title, I think it's you, it's It's, it's that, it's that yeah. heart of the champion. Yeah. It's, all, it's always with you. You never can relax. Right, and especially here with the, with the ranking system, uh, a loss here for the champions against an unranked team would... I think almost grant Private Party a world championship title shot further down the line. Yeah. So absolutely. SCU that has to have that in the back of their mind. And listen to this great crowd here at the Curtis Caldwell Center in Garland, Texas. 50-50 split between Private Party and SCU. Well, oh, look at that, the agility of Scorpio Sky as he springs <laughs> up to his feet. Hello. Yeah. Sky, of course. I wasn't talking about you. Oh, no, no, <laughs> believe, believe Don't me. Don't get your head. Uh, no, no. Keep it in the mask, OK? <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, this guy is somebody that I've known. I've been in the ring with him for uh, a number of years, and he has really broken out in the last couple months, both as a, uh, as a tag team competitor here in AEW, but also as a singles competitor, as he took on Chris Jericho. Oh, look at that! Beautiful drop kick there by Mark Quinn. Scorpio Sky did challenge Chris Jericho for the AEW World Championship title, but it took an intervention from the inner circle partner, Jake Hager, in order to, to turn things around and, and allow Jericho to retain that title. Beautiful leg lariat. There's nothing wrong with your team to help a guy out. I mean, one, only a one count. Yeah, and I was going to say, I mean, you know something about having somebody watch your back and course. how important that is. And learn how to run fast. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful scoop and a slam there by Kazarian. Tremendous elevation. He's come down with that leg drop. Hooks the far leg. One, two, but Cassidy heads up move there to break up the pinning predicament. Referee Mug Posey has his hands full. This action coming hot and heavy here on AEW Dark. And this remember, crowd is amazing. These people are loving what they're seeing, getting a chance to see the AEW World Tag Team Champions who, while they're not in title, the title's not on the line here tonight, Tomorrow night on AEW Dynamite from Corpus Christi, Texas, SoCal Uncensored will be defending the AEW World Tag Team Championship. Be sure to tune in for that. And if you're on social media tonight, use hashtag AEW Dark. When you're tweeting about the show, we would appreciate it. And Vicky, you mentioned this crowd. A, They're on fire. Yeah, <laughs> deafening fire up here. No clear favorite in Texas. Oh, back elbow there by Mark what Quinn. What a great state. I mean, it's my home state. I'm, I'm right at home here with AEW and being in the great state of Texas. Oh, beautiful. <gasps> oh, German oh. suplex planting Mark Quinn on the top of his head. One, two, no. Quinn gets that shoulder up. I think Kazarian was not, not really anticipating somebody as, as lightweight as Quinn, and so what would be a, a normal German suplex and plant somebody on their shoulders. He actually ended up throwing them a little further because they're not, not knowing his own strength. Mark Quinn doing a good job of fighting his way out of the corner and trying to make the long crawl across the floor of the club to get to his partner, Isaiah Cassidy. There's a lot of muscles in that ring. <laughs> there certainly Lord is. Lord. Oh, no! The reversal there by Mark Quinn has SCU on the rope, so to speak. And Vicky, this would be a huge momentum shift if Mark Quinn was able to make that long crawl across the ring. I'm going for private party. Come on, guys. They've proven they can upset top-ranked teams before. Oh, nice. Moonsault press there from Isaiah Cassidy taking out the champions. A series of lariats there from Isaiah Cassidy. Back body drop sends Kazarian up and over the top. Sky charges in. Oh, the boot to the midsection. Cuts off the momentum of Isaiah Cassidy. Sky floats it up and over the top leg layer right there from yes. Cassidy. And Vicky, you've got to be impressed by the explosivity of Private Party. Oh, I am, Excalibur. I am. It's that cougar print and it just touches my heart. <laughs> <laughs> they they were going after your uh, your affection without even knowing it. Uh, you have no idea. <laughs> and look, look at this. Oh, beautiful. Flapjack into a face buster there. Oh, Isaiah, or Mark Quinn had his feet underneath the ropes, and that uh. momentary, that momentary hesitation might have cost him. That's the inexperience of Private Party. Combined, Private Party have less in-ring experience than either member of SCU, and it's little mistakes like that that really shine a spotlight on it. But the sky is the limit with Private Party. 
No what? pun intended. And every minute they're in the ring, it's more experience that they're learning, more knowledge. That's so. right, especially against top-ranked tag teams, or in this case, champions like SCU. That foot stop to the back of the head. There you go. And you got to keep those kicks looking fresh, Vicky. That's right. I want to get me some tennis shoes like that. Cassidy goes down as Mark Quinn launches off his back, taking Frank Kazarian off the, off the apron. And now Quinn tagging in. And it looks like Private Party might be gearing up to put away the champions. And I'm a little biased. I'm going yeah, to party. I mean, it, it's very clear that you you See are me like it. I mean, yeah. I'm a little flushed. And it's not just the heat here in Texas. <laughs> it's actually kind of cold today, but I bring on the heat. Yes. Yeah. I it's feel, not, I feel 12 right. degrees warmer yeah. sitting next to you. Oh, rare. <laughs> and now, Private Party. There's that dance. Shades of Kid and Play. But they might be burning daylight here, giving the champions a chance to recover. Monkey flip into a double lariat. Frankie Kazarian nearly decapitated really Private nice. Party. That's the experience. That's the technique of Kazarian. The elbow to the face of Quen. The back elbow to the face of Cassidy. Oh, shotgun drop kick. Taking down Quen. And now Kazarian. Flattening Isaiah Cassidy, a one-man wrecking crew. Hip toss into the neck breaker. Well, Kazarian has over 20 years experience. I mean, that it says a lot for, you know, his talent and just, he, it's he, very impressive. He's so resilient and so great at improvisation. He's able to turn the tables, especially against ex uh, opponents that are less experienced like Private Party. Mm -hmm. But don't sleep on Private Party. They've proven time after time again. They can shock the world with that backstabber. Sent Quinn into the waiting elbow strike of Scorpio Sky. Now Sky, the foot stomps, knocks Cassidy off the apron. Hook of the leg, one, two, no! Mark Quinn able to kick out. One too short. <laughs> the champions look like they're firing on all cylinders here. Private party, their night could be over very soon. Don't cut them out just yet. It's not over yet. That's right. They, they've. They've tipped, uh, they've tipped and figured out how to work over better, bigger bouncers than SCU. Oh, yeah. See, you see what I mean? Right Cassidy there. able to turn around and as is Quinn, those high kicks have the champions reeling. Look at this, Scorpio Sky can't even get his feet underneath him. There's that smile. Now that million dollar smile and the million dollar tope over the top. Very nice. Rawr. <laughs> This is a fun night for me, Excalibur. That's great. You, you, you're, you're doing some scouting of your own as well. Now Cassidy up on the apron, and then the Asai Moonsault taking out Perfection. SCU once again. I see you. I see you. <laughs> Isaiah Cassidy. Who do you like more between between Cassidy and Quinn? Do you oh. like uh, do you like the Mohawks no. or do you like uh, double the fun? How's oh. that? All right. There you go. <laughs> Don't ask a woman that kind of question. <laughs> That's right. How, how could you choose? <laughs> I look at this Scorpio Sky, very unsteady on his feet. Isaiah Cassidy taking a moment to mock him, and he may pay the price for that. Oh, stunner there. Kick to the face. And now the assistant sliced bread. Sky taking out one, two. No, oh. Scorpio Sky kicks out. 2.99 for that one. I'm rooting for Private Party. I know it's the experience over, you know, the young guys, but I mean, these guys need a chance too, and I'm gonna root for them. And think about the celebration tonight at the club. Ooh. I think, Vicky, I think you've earned yourself a, a spot on the guest list with all of your support. Look at that shooting star press, but nobody home. I can invite myself. <laughs> you are the guest list. <laughs> Scorpio, or Frankie Kazarian rolls Quinn up. No, Mark Quinn able to kick out. Quinn rattled by that shooting star press, but still had the presence of mind to be able to kick out. Irish whip it to the ropes, reversed by Mark Quinn. Kazarian puts on the brakes. Bandera sends Mark Quinn over the top, but Frankie Kazarian had it scouted. He anticipated that shot to the midsection. Now, now the shot's coming in hard and heavy on Isaiah Cassidy. He might yell louder than me. Oh. <laughs> Now look at this, looking for the silly string, but Scorpio Sky had it scouted the boot to the face of Isaiah Cassidy, takes him down. Mark Quinn brought in the hard way. 
Oh, no. And this could spell the end. Come on, Mark. Scorpio Sky's got Quen up on the shoulders. SCU later. Cover, hook of the leg. One, two, three. What a victory for the champions. It was a very good match. I'm pretty impressed by all four of them. The winner of this match, the AEW World Tag Team Champions, SCU. Better luck next time, Private Party. SCU, your winners in this non-title match. And Vicky, I know Private Party didn't win. They were clearly your favorites, but are you going to head to the club tonight and give them some pointers how to tighten up their game? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the touch. That's all it is. <laughs> Private party with a bright future ahead of them, but the champions will go into Corpus Christi tonight, tomorrow night to defend those AEW World Tag Team titles. So SCU now prepared to go up against the Young Bucks. That should be a fantastic match coming up on Dynamite. And by the way, that's coming up this Wednesday on TNT from Corpus Christi. <laughs> Corpus Christi, that match between them and the Young Bucks is going to be phenomenal. Both teams are high flyers. I love those super kicks from the Young Bucks, right. and uh, they're going to give us quite the roller coaster ride. Say Corpus Christi for me. Corpus Christi. Say it five times quickly. No, don't uh, make me do that. <laughs> All right, okay. Before we go to our <laughs> next bout, let's check in with this week's update in women's action with Lexi Nair. Thanks, Tony. The competition in the women's division of AEW continues to be fiercely intense. As unranked Big Swole, an athlete we profiled here last week on Dark, pulled off a major upset of Emi Sakura this past week on Dynamite from Garland, Texas. Two, three, that is it! How about that? Big Swole came to play. No winner of this match. Big Swole! And she just defeated the number three ranked female contender. Two weeks ago on AEW Dynamite, we heard from Brandi Rhodes about the formation of the Nightmare Collective. And it was a very bizarre scene indeed. Although, it's gotten even more bizarre as we heard this from Brandi this past week. Go on, mock me, post about me. But what does AEW actually look like without me? A kid's gymnastics meet? Take our champion, Riho. Has she somehow gotten so small that you just can't see her anymore? Because I haven't seen her around here in weeks to defend that championship. Perhaps she's hiding. And then there's everyone's favorite, the doctor. Here's a new drinking game. Take a shot every time Britt Baker mentions her boyfriend. You'll be laying on your back looking up at the lights quicker than Leva Bates. Not to be a hypocrite, I do mention my husband, but we've been married for almost seven years. You're just a pathetic groupie. Chris Statlander, the offer still stands. I want you. And I am not the only one. The family's almost complete now, it's almost perfect. We're just waiting for our alien to come home. No, not yet. It seems the Nightmare Collective is determined to collect Chris Statlander. Okay, the loss by Sakura has changed the rankings in the women's division that were released this past Friday. Emi Sakura drops from number two down to number five as a result of her loss. Nyla Rose, who has been suspended until the first of the season, is down from number two to number four. In at number three, Hikaru Shida, who was last week's top ranked contender, jumping four spots to number two is Chris Statlander. And Dr. Britt Baker has solidified herself as the number one ranked contender. AEW announced that this week, Dr. Britt Baker will go on to meet Chris Statlander. These top two contenders will collide on Dynamite live from Corpus Christi, Texas. The winner will then go on to face AEW Women's Champion Rio. Don't forget, the new rankings in the women's division will be released this Friday on our social media, on our Twitter feed, at AE Wrestling. 
And that's a look at what's happening in the women's division of All Elite Wrestling this week. I'm Lexi Nair. Okay, Lexi, thank you very much for that update. So let's go to our first of two women's matches as Dr. Britt Baker, the new number one contender, meets Machiko. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Machiko. Well, Machiko with a huge opportunity for herself here tonight as she takes on the number one contender, Britt Baker. We have seen two weeks of upsets in a row as Chris Statlander came in, upset Hikaru Shida, and then last week on Dynamite, we saw Emi Sakura get knocked off by Big Swole. Can Machiko make it a trifecta here with Britt Baker? Joey? Uh, Machiko is a Dallas native, and she has a lot at stake for this match. Uh, I look forward to seeing uh, what she can do in there. And Vicky, Dr. Britt Baker, one of the fastest rising stars in all of women's professional wrestling. Here in AEW, she would like nothing more than get a title shot at Riho, our champion. You know, I'm excited about watching these women. Two talented, fierce women are just gonna give a great match for the crowd tonight. And not to mention, Britt Baker, she's a dentist. <laughs> oh, Very good, You, you got the memo? I heard. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I saw the TNT execs, they were like, get that over. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> Dark is on YouTube, though, so they must be disappointed. Yeah. Just... <laughs> well, you know, the YouTube executives, I get them mixed up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we will have singles competition. Referee Paul Turner drawing the duties, calling for the bell as Machiko seeing her first action inside an AEW ring. And you mentioned, Joey, that Machiko is from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. There's a lot of pressure when you're wrestling in front of your hometown crowd. Absolutely. Especially an opportunity like this. Very colorful. Oh, she is. I kind of like the red hair. Yes. And it's got a uh, little blue on the ends, but Dr. Britt Baker ducking under the lariat. Discus oh. elbow just floors Machko. You have any cavities, Joey? Uh, my teeth are rotting out of my mouth <laughs> at this point. I would only see Dr. Britt Baker if she had nitrous oxide. How's that? I bet she does. She is a <laughs> dental professional. Look at this on the crucifix. One, two, only a one count. Machko able to break free. Britt Baker rolls through the inside cradle. One, again, Machko able to kick out. Britt rolls her through, flips Whoa. over the top. Hooks the far leg. One, two, but Machko again able to kick out. Not letting the spotlight, the nerves get to her, Vicky. Yeah, I mean, both of them have confidence. I mean, Machiko, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna go for the, you know, the, the fierce. Somebody a little, little more colorful, maybe. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm always for the underdog. And uh, I, I think you might have something to, something to say about that leopard print on Machiko as well. Well, yeah, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> okay. but you know, on other people, it's a little more sexier. Oh, okay. <laughs> Joey, you've had, you've had le leopard print on your trunk from time yeah. to time. I think everyone here has leopard print trunks. It's how you tights. style it. That's important. That's it. Come on, guys. Mine's better looking than everyone else's anyway. <laughs> Is Britt Baker has the the arm and neck of Machiko all tied up, but Machiko getting her right arm free and fighting up to her feet, grabbing a handful of the hair and sending Dr. Britt Baker into the ropes. Do whatever it takes to win the match especially the number one contender here in the AEW Women's Division. Tomorrow night on Dynamite, we will see Chris Statlander take on Dr. Britt Baker in that number one contender's match, but things could be a little different here if Machiko comes away with a victory. Britt is looking sharp here. I'm not trying to put her over because I need some dental work. She's really <laughs> looking sharp. But, but Britt's proving herself. I mean, she's just climbing that ladder of success, and not only in the oh. being a doctor, but in the ring too. Yeah, they, that seven years of of education that it took her in order to get that degree in dentistry. Is that it? And look at this: the, the corkscrew neckbreaker. One, two. No, oh, Machko able to kick out at the last possible moment. 
Never underestimate your opponent. That's all I'm going to say. Britt has proven that she is tenacious, that she can stick to a plan. And her plan is to be the top woman here in all elite wrestling. But right now, Machiko has that never say die attitude. As Britt, oh, the super kick to the head has her rattled. And now Britt. There we go. She could be sizing her up for that lock draw. No. Nope. And yes, she is. I spoke too soon. That's it. The Russian leg sweep. She's got the arms captured. Machiko not ready to give up yet, but now putting pressure on that mandibular nerve. The lockjaw is all it took. And the winner of this match, Dr. Brett Baker, D and D. Britt Baker now four and two in AEW, eh? The doctor has awoken. <laughs> the, the doctor has awoken and she will go into Dynamite tomorrow night with that number one contenders match against the galaxy's greatest alien, Chris Statlander. Who kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, she, she yeah. that's almost like her ship crash landed here in AEW. But Vicky, you have to be impressed by the performance of Britt Baker. Yeah, I mean, just what a great woman. And I, I've got to know her today and it's just a great conversation with her. Well, Tony and Dasha will send it back to you. Dr. Britt Baker, deservedly so, is the number one contender for the AEW Women's World Title. That's right, and I spoke to Britt. She is even more focused, more determined. She's had many opportunities for the AEW World Women's Championship, but she's hungry, she's focused, and she's even more determined now to get that gold around her waist. And now our second women's match here on Dark this week. The number two contender, Chris Statlander, goes up against B Priestley. This is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching ring first from Wellington, New Zealand, B. Priestley. Well, B. Priestley's aggressive streak in the women's division has been second to none. But unfortunately for her, she has not been able to string together a series of victories. Yeah, she's had a couple of bad nights. I mean, first losing to Britt Baker and then getting her hair, a piece of haircut from, oh my gosh, the Nightmare Collective, that's really, that's, yeah. that's a bad month for her. Women absolutely fear this woman in Japan. Yeah, the top gaijin in Japan, B Priestley, has made a name for herself there, and if she knocks off the number two contender, Chris Statler, Stantlander here tonight, she can make a name for herself on this side of the Pacific too. Galaxy, Chris this is someone I'm really familiar with, Excalibur. This is a this is a woman that's been tearing it up all over the independent scene. And three weeks ago, she came into an AEW ring, and she's definitely familiar with uncharted territory. And she not only tore it up, she proved she belonged with all elite wrestling. Just in three weeks time, climbing the ranks to the number two contender here in AEW. She will face Dr. Britt Baker tomorrow night on Dynamite. Well, she is scheduled to face. Yeah. B Priestley could disrupt those plans with a victory here tonight. She's making quite an impression on AEW. I mean, moving really fast and I'm really impressed by her. And Chris Statlander, and in the face of, uh, of referee Aubrey Edwards, could be looking for a boop. Nope, no boop, but Aubrey Edwards calls for the bell. And now two of the heaviest hitters in the women's division set to square off. This is gonna be great. I'm really looking forward to uh, calling and watching this one. B. Priestley with a slight experience advantage, but both of these women have earned all the acclaim every bit of the acclaim they've they've garnered around the world but b priestley not afraid to bend the rules and vicky you know something about bending the rules i i don't mean there's to nothing cast wrong with that excalibur there's nothing wrong with that I, yes you're right b priestley is one of the toughest women i've ever seen she's one of the only women that oh she booped her oh <laughs> but you know b also gave Britt baker a concussion so Chris better be, you know, a little, have a little bit of caution with B. There you go. Oh, look at this B. Chris Pulls fixed. through. One, two. 
Two count Statlander able to break free. Oh, the oh. boot to the top of the knee, taking B's legs out from under, and then the drop kick to the side of the head. And Vicky, you're exactly right. That kick to the back of the head sideline Britt Baker for a number of months. But she has rebounded very nicely. And now Chris Statlander to the outside. The moonsault lands on, on her feet. feet. The running knee strike, though, takes down the galaxy's greatest alien. Wow. And now the backdrop on the ring apron. Statlander has a background in, gym, in gymnastics, and she used to be a stunt woman for movies and TV. So she oh. has quite a diverse background here. Very diverse background. You're right, Joey. And she is one of the, the most powerful competitors here in the women's division. That gives her a great advantage, but she pairs that so well with her agility. Joint manipulation right here. This is not a, this is not a great thing, thing to feel when you're in the ring. B. Priestley looking to punish the hands, the limbs of Chris Statlander. I'd be a little afraid of B. I mean, you know, she's good at concussions. I mean, I would be very cautious. <laughs> Joey, you're good at concussions. Yeah, I'm very good. Don't, <laughs> don't oh, tell, so cavities and concussions. Don't tell Protocol that. <laughs> don't tell Nowinski. B oh, puts on the over. brakes. Oh, savage chop, chop there. Arm, chop. Statlander lighting up B Priestley, but uh -oh. Oh, B grabs a handful of hair. One, two, and Vicky, that once again, nice. B Priestley taking advantage of the rules. Yeah, she's, I mean, she's a strong woman. I would learn to run very fast from her. But Chris Statlander never won to back down from a fight. Joey, you know that with, uh, with first-hand knowledge. Yes, yes. Me and her, actually, we wrestled each other for 30 minutes a few months ago at a Beyond Wrestling show in uh, Massachusetts. And uh, people called it on the Internet one of the best intergender matches of the year for the... Uh, for the year, but it, it's just, she's like, uh, she's tough. She's, she's tenacious. Tough. Absolutely. And, oh, B. Priestley looking to test every bit of that tenacity. Covers hook the leg. One, two. Nope. Statlander able to kick out. And what an upset that would be. You know, if, I love the confidence of the women of AEW. I mean, they are confident. They want to have the, those opportunities. I mean, I'm just so impressed by their strength, their confidence. I'm, I'm like their biggest cheerleader. These women are competing on the world stage. They know a victory here could mean a match tomorrow night in Corpus Christi, Texas. And that would then allow them to challenge AEW Women's World Champion Riho. And a victory there would be a complete life-changing opportunity. Up and over she goes. All victories Buckle. are good, Excalibur. In Zaguri. Well said, Vicky. And now B. Priestley headed up to the top with Statlander with a hard right hand. Big palm strike, shades of Jushin Thunder Liger. Pounding away now. It's really incredible. They both have three years experience in wrestling. So they're they're really, you know, at neck and neck with how much oh. they've been training with wrestling. Look Tucks at, her in. Oh, she, oh. She, she is looking for the cheeky Nandos, but Statlander Very nice. reversing with that mule kick. Statlander drops to her back, springs to her feet, catches the Larry to tap high right roundhouse kick. That connected. Yeah, oh. B yeah. on roller skates. And Statlander at the running back elbow strike. It's the rough, a running knee to the side of the head. Giving her a taste of her own medicine yeah. right now. He might have a taste of what a concussion feels like. She gets flattened. One, two, no. Priestley able to kick out. Another good call by ref Aubrey. Aubrey Edwards has quickly asserted herself as the top official here in AEW. You know, I interviewed her on my podcast, and she's only had two years experience of learning how to be a ref, and it's just amazing how perfectionist she is in her craft. She is a true professional, a true perfectionist, just as you said. Oh, again with the hair. But all oh, the German suplex. Priestley hangs on. She's bringing Statlander back up to her feet. Got the, the, looking for that shoulder capture suplex. Statlander had it scouted, fighting her way out of it. Those elbows sledgehammering down on the back of the head. Priestley hits the rump, the discus lariat. Looks like B might wake up a little sore tomorrow morning. 
Especially if Chris Statlander keeps the pressure on her, but I, I question I question the logic there. She could have had Priestley beat in the, in the center of the ring, but instead, guys, whoever wins this match, you know, is at a definite disadvantage. Wow, incredible, incredible. They're at a definite disadvantage for the, the championship for, match. Uh, for that tomorrow, number one night, contenders yes. match tomorrow on Dynamite. And look at this. The Nightmare Collective telling with the signs for Chris Stanlander. They want Stanlander as their newest member. Stay away from those creeps. Oh, well, they're not that bad. <laughs> Are you scared? Are you scared, Joey? <laughs> I, I, I don't oh. want my head getting shaved. <laughs> That's the only thing I got going for me. Joey Jan Janela, very protective of that full head of hair. But right now, Chris Stanlander, she took her eye off B Priestley for a second and gets stomped for her troubles. That cover, get that cover. Cover one, two, no! Oh, so close. Brandy, awesome Kong, and. And I believe that's that's Melanie Cruz, the newest member of the Nightmare Collective. Have they've they've come down to to cheer? Oh, look at that shoulder capture suplex! One, two, no! Just in time. That was close. They've come down to recruit Statlander to their cause, but they might be doing more harm than good, distracting Statlander. Yeah, you know, Bree Priestley is should be cautious because they've already taken a lock of her hair. Yeah. Yeah, we saw at the buy-in for full gear. Stay away from me and my locks, my luscious well, bad boy locks. If they got my hair, they wouldn't have much, so I don't have nothing <laughs> to worry about. Joey, I would be very scared. For an ocean cyclone. Yeah, B Priestley is <laughs> looking for that Japanese ocean cyclone suplex, but oh. Statlander has B all rolled up in the Oklahoma, or shall we say the Dallas roll. <laughs> These women are incredible. I mean, what? What a match. One, two, oh! oh! So close. B Priestley was disoriented, and Chris Statlander very nearly took advantage. Statlander needs to, to press the attack. She ducks under the high roundhouse. Went for that back hook kick. The running knee strike avoided. She ducks under the leg. Saino oh. suplex. Just oh. planting Statlander on the back of her head. That's how dangerous B Priestley is. She can turn things around at a moment's notice. They're both very tired right now, I can see, though. Oh, look at this up on the shoulders. Statlander. Oh, the gut buster. Driving the oxygen out of the lungs. And the scissor kick to the back. That's it, that's it. One, two, no. Oh. Don't underestimate the women. I'm just saying. B Priestley will not be denied. She's working hard tonight, that's for sure. She knows a victory here could lead to a life-changing opportunity in all elite wrestling. And now Statlander looking for that big bang theory, but instead B countered, but Statlander countered with that kick to the back of the head. Now B Priestley all hooked up with nowhere that's to it. go. Big oh, bang oh, theory. No. Oh, no. One, two, three. Oh my God, that was right on her head. She might be a little sore tomorrow. I think she's gonna be a lot sore tomorrow, but it looks like the Nightmare Collective is happy with what they saw. And Vicky, what a great recruiting video that was for Chris Statlander. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is gonna be, this is getting exciting. Every week, everyone should be tuning in because it's just getting better and better as these women are, are showing their, their talent. And Chris Stadlander on a date with Destiny tomorrow night on AEW Dynamite. She will face Dr. Britt Baker to determine the number one contender for the AEW Women's World Championship currently held by Riho. Tomorrow night, number one and number two in the AEW Power Rankings will face off. Britt Baker and Chris Stadlander will go one-on-one -on -one in a number one contenders match. Chris Jericho will face Jungle Boy in a non-title matchup. Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page will face the Lucha Brothers. Young Bucks against SCU for the World Tag Team title. Did you hear the news, puny human? Did you hear? Chris Statlander is gonna be your leader because last week, I just beat Sheeta. 
This week, I just beat B. Nyla Rose is off of my radar, which means Britt Baker is next. The galaxy's greatest is getting that rocket strapped to her back. Do you feel that gravitational pull? It's that title coming into orbit around my waist. Next week, it's gonna be you and me, Britt, and I will be your leader. Don't forget, it's coming up this coming Wednesday, live on TNT from the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi, Texas, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central, two full hours of Abe. What a great card in Corpus Christi, huh? Well, I cannot wait to see the Hyper 2. No? I like it. <laughs> Do that again for me. The Hyper 2. <laughs> Gotta love my job. It's time for our main event here on Dark. The Hyper 2, again, Pack will team up. Uh, not the same effect. <laughs> Against best friends and Orange Cassidy. This is a six man tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching ring first at a combined weight of 377 pounds, Jack Evans. On Helico, the hybrid two. TH2, Jack Evans and Angelico have not found much luck in the trios division here in AEW, but according to them, they just haven't found the right partner. Tonight, they found a bastard. Yeah, but at the same time, Jack Evans, every time he comes out here on AEW Dark, he proves something. He's kind of becoming the ace of the show, to be honest. And he teaming back up with Angelico. TH2 and their partner about to hit his head to the ring. And their partner from Newcastle upon Tyne, England, weighing 206 pounds, he is a bastard. <laughs> Justin Roberts really loves to lean into that bastard. <laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> but if there's anybody that deserves that moniker, it is none other than Pac. He's a monster. Every time I see this guy in the locker room, he's talking to himself. <laughs> he's, he's constantly muttering to himself. He has the biggest chip on his shoulder, maybe in AEW, and that is, that is with full knowledge that John Moxley is in AEW. And Pac with a chance to show off his tag team technique here tonight as he teams up with TH2. But he'll have a tough test ahead of himself. This is his first trios match uh, in AEW, This is his first six-person tag team match. And their opponents, at a total combined weight of 589 pounds, Chuck Taylor, Trent, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy, Listen Aww. to the response here in Dallas for the best friends and Orange Cassidy. Cassidy currently undefeated here in AEW. Oh, hoping to keep that record alive. You know, being the cougar that I am, I tried to smile at Pac all day today. Not one smile at me. I'm feeling a little disrespectful. And Vicky, you are you are quite the charmer. Well, what, do, what, do you, you. what do you think about Orange Cassidy? Would you go out on pasta day with him? Absolutely. He's a, he is quite the hunk. Quite the sex god, <laughs> I might say. Not as pretty as me. No, but. not, I mean, who? Do you want my opinion? Yeah, you what do you think? No, he's pretty cute. You're, he's, you're okay. Is it, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it, is it, is it? You have cavities. It's the teeth. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 gave, you divulged too much information. Yeah. Oh. It's the teeth, it's the rotting teeth. And before this match gets underway, want to remind everybody that tickets for AEW's next big pay-per-view event, Revolution, taking place February 29th at the Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago, Illinois. They will go on sale this Friday, December 20th, at AEWTix.com. Vicky, uh, 
you might be you might be right with Orange Cassidy. He, he is a, he's a pretty tough guy. Uh, he's not one to back away in a Blink 182 concert. The man is actually one of the bravest I've ever seen. He's so brave that he would strap a bucket of maple syrup to his back and drive a motorbike through the great country of Canada. I'm sure I can make him smile. I, I want to see where this goes after this match. <laughs> Look at this orange Cassidy. He is. He's getting a, a hero's welcome here in <laughs> Dallas. Referee Bryce Remsburg drawing the duties for this matchup. Orange Cassidy not wanting uh, not sharing the tag rope with with Chuck Taylor, sexy Chucky T. Orange but, Cassidy's like Tony Romo circa 2015 <laughs> in Dallas. He is a hero here. And now side headlock takeover there by Trent and Helico, though. He's got that tremendous Yaveo background, that Mexican submission grappling style. And so it's gonna take take a lot of technique by Trent if he wants to gain the upper hand on the lanky South African. Sometimes I wish I wore a full body suit like Angelico Soul, you know, so I don't get the, you know, you know the deal. <laughs> I wore a full body want, suit. I got a little bit of a belly. Powers. I got a little bit of the jelly belly, you know? <laughs> I bet you that body suit has some superpowers. The girls like the jelly belly when they're cuddling. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. They love the Janela Nutella. <laughs> I have lost control that of this AEW scary. Dark broadcast. I have been waiting for the main, so I didn't get uh, <laughs> kicked off <laughs> to go wild. Wristlock, well, great tag wrestling. Hey, thanks, thanks for taking over. <laughs> These guys just cutting the ring in half. That's the way to do it. Not that outlaw mud show wrestling that we're used to seeing, you know? <laughs> Chuck Taylor with the left arm of Angelico isolated. And freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy may be seeing his first action of the match. Biggest pop of the night. Oh. Oh, and Helico cuts, up, cuts off Chuck Taylor. And now, and Helico sends Taylor Pillar to post. Taylor, though, with it, laces his boot over, takes the side headlock, and Helico sh shoves him off, sends him into the corner. Now, and Helico throws a wild right hand. Chuck Taylor able to avoid. Taylor rolls through. Nice. Got, grabs the single leg crab. And look at this, Jack Evans, all the roundhouse kick. And you see Pack doing a great job of diverting the referee's attention. Lethal kicks. You know, and also, um, Pack and Hybrid and Angelico, they also feel disrespected by the AEW management. So that's something that they probably have a grudge coming out here and they want to oh, prove themselves. The soul food there by Chuck Taylor. And Vicky, you're exactly right. All three of those men feel like they've been overlooked, underserved here in AEW, and that they deserve more. Pack, oh, the shot to the kidneys of Chuck Taylor. Referee distracted. And Helico, the hard right hand to the jaw, and now Pack sees his first legal action of this matchup. Oh, the oh. pump kick to the jaw. That's it. That's gonna hurt. Chuck Taylor and Hammer throwing across the ring, sent Pillar to post by the bastard who charges in with that rising European uppercut. You know, this is Pac's first match since his loss to Kenny Omega two weeks ago on Dynamite. And we saw last week on Dynamite when he, he issued that challenge, he laid it out. He wants his rubber match against Kenny Omega, and he will stop at nothing to get it. He knows that in his heart that he's the better competitor, that Omega just got lucky on Dynamite a couple weeks ago. Jack yeah, Evans. <laughs> Like he was hip tossing Andre the Giant. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Evans hooks both legs. Only a one count there as Chuck Taylor able to kick out. Vicky, out of these six men, who would you most likely go on a pasta date with? All of them. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know that did include you, right, Joey? Did it include me? No. Oh. Hey, Bryce is a married man. It's all right. Got a lovely family. I got enough girls slipping in my DMs, or am I slipping in their DMs? Who knows? Oh, Feeling your jelly belly roll? Yeah, yeah. It's not that bad. It's not a jelly <laughs> belly roll. And Just send a girl a little hard eyes on the Instagram and call it a day. <laughs> Usually works. Chuck Taylor making it a, the roll across the ring. Trent, Trent tags in. Back elbow knocks off. Pack. And then and, and, uh, Evans charges in after Angelico got taken off his feet. Trent Barretta has been on fire oh. here. Beautiful back body drop. And Trent. You're exactly right, Joey. He's been doing a great job in both the singles and tag team division. And he maneuvers Angelico oh. into that rising knee strike. Watch out for the hunk in the corner. Yeah, you know, also Trent is pissed off at Phoenix, so that's gonna get, look, he's got that aggression. 
Oh, Trent oh. over the top. Top a con hello. <laughs> and Orange Cassidy approves. When I see Orange Cassidy now, I just think about maple syrup from what you said, Joey. That's it. Yeah. You've got to give the people what they oh know. Oh, my God. And Pac, not the legal man. And Trent should be scared of Pac because Pac beat him on November 6th on Dynamite. So there's a little animosity between those two. Just Big. stopping Trent Beretta now, Angelico. The team of the Hybrid 2 and Pac seem to be working better as a unit. Where's Bryce? Where's his eyes? He's got a lot to, lot to pay attention to in this matchup. He's probably That's distracted by invisible stands somewhere in the stands. And now Pac just stomping with the flat of his boot with his heel. And to come on, And Bryce. look at this. He's diverting the referee's attention and allowing TH2. That's not a bad thing. You know, a little cheating there. It's OK. And yeah. now Pac pulling Trent to center. Only a one count. Vicky, I'm not one to cheat. I'm a God-fearing Christian boy. And Whatever, I grew up Joey. that way. Blah, blah, blah. Cheating's bad. <sighs> you cheat. There's nothing wrong with cheating. All right. As long as no one's watching, it's all good. Everybody, while you're here, you might want to visit shopaew.com to get uh, your best friend's merchandise or AEW logo t-shirts. That's shopaew.com. Makes a great holiday gift. I yeah, got a shirt tonight. Yeah, Joey, do you know the shirt, right? That's right. No, AEW shirt. I'm going to wear it on the way home. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Show it off to everybody. Going to get you a Joey Genoa shirt. We'll see. Now maybe, some, maybe some rigatoni. <laughs> I'll take the rigatoni. Okay. <laughs> Little mots for the boys as Jack Evans landing some right hands to the forehead of Trent. TH2 and Pac have really been doing a number on the best friends here. Evans cartwheels through that attempt. Oh! Mm. Evans corkscrews over the top. The heel of his boot colliding with the head of Trent. He knows how to move that body in all Looks the near leg. Directions. One, two. Two count only. And you're right, Joey. Jack Evans has tremendous body control when he takes to the skies. They don't call him Jack Evans from the heavens for nothing. My buddy, Jack Evans from the heavens. Ah. <laughs> uh, Trent slammed face first into the top turnbuckle as Pac continues to maintain control. Now Trent, oh, sent Trent over the be cautious. <laughs> top into the corner, into the waiting arms of Pac. Pack just deadlifts him into the Blue Thunder Bomb. One, two, two count. You see there, Pack did not put his legs over the shoulders of Trent's extended arms. And that may have been what led to Trent kicking out. Again, Pack is probably feeling very disrespected. I mean, I'm feeling bad for the guy. This crowd is white hot right now. <laughs> After one hell of a night yeah, here on Dark. The action here on AEW Dark has been outstanding, and thank you for joining us. Remember, oh, look at that, the half and half. Suplex sending Pac for a ride. Trent better get out of the ring. Here comes Pac. Okay. Oh, okay. And Helico makes the tag, and the diving wow. stomp to the rib cage. Oh. And Helico, he's not even going to bother knocking Orange Cassidy off the off the apron because he fears for his life <laughs> but really why would you what has Orange Cassidy shown TH2 and Pac in this matchup as Trent oh the swinging DDT planting Angelico on the top of his head Trent swings for the fence of that lariat but he actually put himself further across the ring from his friendly corner Gosh, look at Orange Cassidy just standing there that smirk we're about to see the hottest tag of this generation. The laconic and sloth-like Orange Cassidy. With two, with two weeks to go. <laughs> the, look at this Orange Cassidy. Just, the fans chanting that they want orange. They want to see freshly squeezed. Come Will on. Trent make the tag? Give us some OJ. Jesus. Oh my God. Finally. <laughs> Look at the crowd there. They are lit tonight. The roof has yeah. come off the Curtis Everyone Caldwell is... <laughs> Center. It was like Ricky Morton tagging in Robert Gibson. Everyone night. is on their feet. This is exciting. But here's the thing. 
Orange Cassidy cannot underestimate Angelico. Angelico's so dangerous with those submissions, so dangerous with those kicks. Those pockets are a portal to another dimension. Ever see the movie Annihilation? Look at that, ducking under, going over the top. I read the book, Joey, but now Orange Cassidy, drop kick, and springs wow. up to his feet. How you doing? <laughs> Look at this, Jack Evans comes in behind. Grabs the waist like oh, pack with the pump kick, knocks Evans out of the ring. This is what they paid a ticket to see. I, I'm so flabbergasted, I don't know what to say. We have front row tickets. This is awesome, guys. Jesus. He better be careful with Pack. Pack is not in a good mood. Oh, Pack went for the pump kick. Cassidy avoids it, goes over DDT! <laughs> Got some OJ going. Cassidy plants the bastard on the top of his head. I'm kind of impressed, guys. I'm getting flushed all over again tonight. And the glasses are on. The hands are in the pockets. Orange Cassidy <gasps> taking to the sky. <laughs> Trope la naranja. Orange Cassidy taking out all three members of the opposition. I don't even know what to say anymore. I'm kind of, this is awesome. Wow. <laughs> Orange Cassidy crashing into the pile. That's hot, Joey. You can't do that. And the best friends got to <laughs> give the people what they want. Wonder if he'll take my number. And Helico up to the top. Oh well, no, the Our double mother. goozle. Double choke slam. And now Orange Cassidy. Oh, I know this move. He's going up to the top. Oh, just hit to the splash. One, two. <laughs> no, oh. and Helico kicks out. <laughs> Look at Not today. And oh, now and Helico sent face first into the middle turnbuckle. And Chuck Taylor has him set up. What a great match. Like, I am so glad to be here tonight. Chucky e. T. Oh. Nobody home. And Helico, oh, just bullies him to the corner. Jack Evans tags in. Drop kick knocks Trent off the apron and a oh. high kick. That's the last time he'll underestimate Orange Cassidy. Car wheel elbow. Chuck Taylor in a world of trouble here. Able to avoid the boot from Angelico, but not that one. I just see a cat in the front row. What's going on here? And now, not in Dallas. Are you look at this, and Helico with the assisted 450 and pack. Oh, the 450 off the top one, two. Trent there in time to break it up. They're working like a well-oiled machine right now. Incredible match. TH2, Vicky, you alluded to it earlier, of a similar mind with Pack, and they have shown great tag team instincts here tonight. It's perfection. And, oh. And look at this. Oh, the pump kick knocking Cassidy off the apron. Pack is out for revenge. Chuck Taylor take advantage. Chuck Taylor rolls oh. it up. One, two. Oh, oh, so close. Pack is not going to give up that easy. Taylor charges in. Set to the ropes. Oh, the release. German suplex turn him inside out. Chuck Taylor so unsteady on his feet. Up on oh, the shoulders. Him. Oh, Pack oh. looking for the brutalizer. He's making Taylor carry his weight, and it just oh. wrenching back on that neck. It's not looking that good. That head, and Taylor is is he's wilting before our eyes, and he is forced to tap out. Pack forcing Chuck Taylor to submit with a brutalizer. Incredible. What an amazing victory for TH2 and Pack. And they have, they have found some kindred spirits. Vicky, if you had to pick one, who was most impressive in your eyes in this matchup? Oh my, Pat, by all means. He, I mean, he forced Chuck he Taylor to submit, out, to submit, to tap out. Yeah. The bastard is on a mission here for respect in AEW. For myself, Excalibur, for the bad boy, Joey Janela, for Vicky Bye. Guerrero, we will send it back to Tony and Dasha. Okay, so another week is done on Dark. A couple of reminders. First of all, join the conversation on hashtag 
AEW Dark. You can find us on all social media platforms. And it is, as you know, the holiday season. It is among us. And if you're looking for a great gift or a stocking stuffer for your loved one, go to shopaew.com. Pick up all the cool official merchandise that AEW has to offer. Absolutely. And don't forget our next big pay-per-view is coming to Chicago. It's on the 29th of February. It's AEW Revolution. We're just starting to talk about this big event. It's part of C2E2 downtown in Chicago. We're going to be there. And what about tickets? Tickets go on sale this Friday, and the only way to cop those tickets is to go to AEWTix.com. They're going to go faster. You're going to want to get those this Friday. Absolutely. For Dasha Gonzalez, I'm Tony Schiavone. Thanks for joining us on AEW Dark. <laughs>